In South Korea, there are many emotions about the changing relationship with North Korea. Among small, vocal nationalist groups, there is suspicion about Pyongyang's motives. They're concerned, even paranoid, that South Korea is about to be engulfed by communism. Away from the loud rallies, there are those for whom the cross-border engagement offers a glimmer of hope in what has often seemed a hopeless situation. It's hard to expect too much, but we need to see how it goes. We're putting all our efforts together in the hope that our issues will be discussed in the summit with North Korea. Those issues are abductions and other human rights abuses that victims and their families believe need to be on the agenda in Singapore. Huang In Chol's father, Huang Won, was on a plane in 1969 when it was hijacked by a North Korean agent. Most of the passengers were eventually allowed to return to the south, but Huang Won, who's now 81, wasn't among them. Some experts believe raising human rights in the first meeting may be too sensitive. Japan's government disagrees and has been pushing for the issue of abductions to be discussed. North Korea admitted kidnapping 13 Japanese in the 1970s and 80s to train as spies. Some have been returned, but Japan's government suspects there may be hundreds still in North Korea. There are other nationalities too, like this woman seen in the background of a photo taken on a North Korean beach. Family members believe it's Anocha Panjoy, a Thai woman who disappeared from Macau in 1978. I have a lot of hope that South Korea, Japan and the US will push the North Korean abduction issue and I will be able to meet Anocha soon. At this stage, the new diplomatic face of North Korea is largely viewed as positive, but for many it will mean nothing if the people they've been waiting decades to see aren't allowed to come home.